Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba, I hope it took a lot a very in-depth question but I thought it was something worth addressing uh, that someone uh, brought up in their criticism of uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya so the commenter, the person who commented, they said, Ibn Abdul Wahhab was a takfir. Now, I understand this was a grammatical mistake, and had the ideology of the Khawarij. The only Mubtadiya was him. He made takfir, takfir of major sins such as this. And then he brings a nas from uh, Kashf Shubahat. He says, Qala Shaykh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab fi kitabihi Kashf Shubahat. La khilaf and a tawheed la bud and yukum bi qalb wa lisan wa amal fa inna akhtala shayin min hadha lam yukum ar rajal muslim then the person who made this comment they translated this by saying Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab said in his book Kashf al page 64 through 65 there is no argument that tawheed it must be with the heart and tongue in action. If there is any deficiencies in any of them, then the person is not a Muslim. Then this person goes on to say, unless you argue zina, riba, and missing prayers isn't a deficiency in Tawheed, come on, come on, be what do you say about this comment when he said any deficiencies? Allah is opening the veil, he spelled veil wrong, on this individual and the Muslims are waking up this individual, no more propaganda. So I think this person maybe is not a native speaker or they just make a lot of mistakes typing. Plus he made takfir of the whole Ottoman state, not individuals, and said anyone who doesn't classify the Ottomans as kuffar, as a kafir. I also noticed that when listings to you Salafi brothers, a lot of mistakes that you don't read from his book whenever you speak about him and I see this as a level of deception like so this individual John Ahai I'm assuming this person is a Muslim uh, but the name can be uh, deceptive or what have you the point being they made some very interesting comments we're not going to deal with all the things but we we just read the nuss that you gave us a nuss so we're going to address this. So in your comment, you mentioned the Nas. You mentioned the statement of uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. And the reason why this is very important that we do address this, because actually we do teach from his books. I'm not talking about just myself, but many, many tulab al-alm in the West, uh, the East and the West, the North and the South, around the world, they teach from his books. So that's not true, but um, perhaps an individual that you listen to did it, doesn't do that. But how many books do I have really on this YouTube page? Qaid al-Arba, Usul al Thalatha, Sitta Usul, and Nawaq al-Islam. It's all here. So there's no way you could say that being true about what I'm doing. So there's many people, what you're st stating is just simply not true. But what's very important here is the nas that you gave, the statement of Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala and the way you translated a word. And I'm going to look at two, another translation. Of course, it's a, from Salafis, or, uh, but I think this is more, we have to be accurate. We have to be more, um, uh, we, we need to be accurate in, these, in what we're delivering, what we're speaking about, us and you. So you said uh, when uh, the statement of Muhammad of the Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala when he said la khilaf and tawheed la bud an yakun bi qalb wa lisan wal amal fa in akhtala shay'in shay'in min hadha lam yakun ar rajul muslim why this is important there's a one word there so you translated you said there's no argument that tawheed it must be with the heart and the tongue and the action i have no problem with that that's good if there is any deficiencies, that statement right there where you said deficiencies versus another translation I'm going to give you and what I would have went with this other translation, it's very clear to me. Akhtala means to remove, not deficiencies. So you see, I want you to see that 
how different you can come to a conclusion and it affects even your Akita and your methodology aside from, which is related to interpretation and can change the whole meaning. This individual understands this one word, akhtala, uh, as meaning deficiencies. Instead of saying that this means to remove, meaning that it's totally not there, not deficiencies. This makes a big difference in difference in hukum. You translated, you said there's no argument that tawhidah must be with the heart and the tongue and the actions. And if there is any deficiencies in one of them, in any of it, then the Muslim is not, then the person is not a Muslim. And then you said, so unless you argue zina, riba, and missing prayers isn't a deficiency in tawhid, which we're not arguing that because tawhid, maybe you could say it's synonymous with iman in, in some uh, senses, you know, because it's the assass of the religion. And uh, so when a person is doing acts of disobedience, this is also a type of showing a deficiency in their Tawheed. Because the Tawheed is not just memorizing the categories of Tawheed, but it requires practice. As Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahhab states con consistently, and I've actually spent the past 30 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour going through trying to find your statement on the page in the Arabic text and from the explanation of Imam bin Baz. And uh, it was very beneficial and I need to go back and review this book. It's a very important text. So, um, but as you said, this makes a big difference. Let's look at, uh, here's what uh, Troy, a Salafi organization, and, uh, and this translation, I think, Akhtala, I think this is much more accurate. And it's going to lead to a totally different conclusion. They say, as far as their translation, which is what I, I thought of when I read it, they said, and they said, uh, where the statement of Muhammad al Wahhab, there is no differing that Tawheed must occur with the heart and with the tongue and with the actions, which is very similar to what you said, basically what you said. Then, so if one of these is missing, it's missing, it's removed, that means it's totally, uh, uh, totally not there. And why, I'm not gonna just talk from a linguistic point of view of why this is consistent uh, with the, you know this translation, but also, if you look at the speech of Muhammad ibn the Wahhab and what Imam bin Baz says, you'll see that that's consistent to what he believes as well. Aside from you making a mistake in that term, in, in its context here, it is witnessed in the text of Muhammad ibn Wahhab of what he believes about this issue of takfir and so forth. That this is more, this is consistent with the meaning. So if one of these is missing, how do I, I'm making a claim. Let's look at the evidence. He says, and this, so you've only given us part of the, what he says to prove your point. Again, this cut and paste, we have to be very careful to make a point. We need to go to what the man is saying. Here's what the Imam says. He says, so if, if he knows Tawheed but does not act on it, then he is a Kafir. Okay, I don't even need to go to all the other things because I read pages of it and went back and forth trying to find the text and, and finding out more and more of the context of what he's saying, which is very clear. But listen to this statement. This is the next sentence that you failed to put, that you failed to post. Again, so if he knows Tawheed, so that means he, he acknowledges Tawheed and he knows it and he believes it in his heart. Okay, but does not act upon it. Here, he's negating that there's action at all in Tawheed. So, Akhtala here is referring to totally not having actions with regards to Tawheed. Meaning that you believe that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, but you just don't worship Him. You don't do it. You don't pray. You don't fast. You don't do this. And you say you're a Muslim. And you have the opportunity. Okay? This is what he, so he says, then he is a kafir, one who stubbornly opposes, and then he gives an example, such as Fir'aun, Iblis, and the like of these two. Okay, that was in the English. Let's look at what Imam bin Baz says uh, about the statement. And I know you may not take from Imam, Imam bin Baz, you don't really care, but I just want for those people, for those of us who really want to learn, whose hearts are open to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, based on the book, the Sunnah, the Faham, and the Salaf al -Saleh, Looking at this in light of what Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab 
is saying. We need to have a proper context because our dawa is not to him. We are not, as those people claim, Wahhabis. But rather, we respect him as a scholar, uh, an imam, who helped revive the call to Tawheed, who also, like the Prophet ﷺ said, he also fits under this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, Adam All the children of Adam commit sins or make mistakes, and the best of those who are, are those who repent. So we don't say every word, every harf, that his word and his text are like the Quran. That's not what we say. Nor do we say they're like the Sunnah. But we love those texts because of their their uh, that they they are uh, evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. But that doesn't mean there's he, he's made no mistakes or there's things that are ambiguous that he says. That's not what we say. We're not saying that. We don't make taqlid of him. Now listen what Imam bin Baz says about this. He says, فَالْحَاصِلْ لَابُدْ مِنْ تَوْحِيدْ بِالْقَلْبِ وَلِسَانِ وَعَمَلْ The same thing Muhammad ibn Wahab said. So he said, فَالْحَاصِلْ You know, uh, so the end result basically is that you, the, that Tawheed with the heart, you know, belief in the heart, uh, which is all a part of Iman, uh, وَلِسَانِ Also on the tongue, statements of the tongue, uttering the shahada, the testimony of faith, وَالْعَمَلْ And actions, so that means you're actually practicing that Tawheed by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, him and him alone, no shirk. He says, وَإِنْ وَحَدَ بِقَلْبِهِ فِي زَعْمِهِ وَلَكَنْ أَشْرَكْ بِقَوْمْ أَوْ بِفِعْلْ لَمْ يَنْفَعُ So he says, so if one, you know, believes in Tawheed with his heart, he only, he, in his heart, he believes that there's only one God worthy of worship. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. He believes that in his heart. Uh, Imam bin Baz is calling that down. He says, في زعمه, In his claim. وَلَكِنْ أَشْرَقْ بِقَوْلِ أَوْ بِفِعْلِ لَمْ يَنْفَعْهُ However, if this person he commits shirk with a statement or his action, then it's not going to benefit him. Why? Because he he's, he's negated his tawheed. So this, if you want to be accurate about what Muhammad ibn al Wahhab was saying, I think that's enough. I don't even have to read the rest of Ibn Baz. I was going to go through it because it's very beneficial and it's very relevant to what we're talking about. But I think that's our point should be proven. Our point should be clear. So if the person, they believe in their heart, but yet on their tongue they say, <clears throat> for the sake of celebrating Christmas, they say, you know, really Jesus is the Son of God. Although I believe... Allah is one. They've negated that. I mentioned that statement to give you the example. That they have now committed the major shirk which takes you out of the fold of Islam, which negates that tawheed that they claim. And that's why Ibn Ba'a said, Fi za'mihim, in their claim that they worship Allah alone. Because now they've associated a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his divinity. And negated the Quran, taqdeeb al Quran as well, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, you know, Kulhu Allah had Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid Walam Yulad, Walam Yukulhu Kufuan Ahad. Allah does not begin, nor was he begotten, uh, and no, nor is there anything, you know, he has no partners, there's nothing uh, with him. There's nothing that resembles him, nothing like him. Tabarak wa ta'ala. So we see that. You can negate your Islam through a statement, which means akhala, going back to that word that you deceptively, or you made a mistake, I'm not going to say you deceptively, but you claim that Muhammad ibn Wahab, and you claim that the Salafis who teach his text are being deceptive. No, now we're having a monakasha, we're dealing, dealing with your issue. And you translated that akhala to mean uh, uh, deficiency. But that's not consistent here with what, what Muhammad ibn Wahhab said and what Imam bin Baz, one of the 
great imams of our time who teaches those books. And we could probably go to many of the texts. We could go to Ben Othemi, we can go to Imam Fuzan, we can go to Catholic Emma, Emma to Ahl Sunnah, and you'll find the consistent uh, meaning. But we don't need to really go to Imam Muhammad ibn Wahab's uh, treatise and you'll see it's consistent with what he believes. And go to his other texts and you'll see that they uh, give you the consistency of what we're talking about. Again, another example. So that's negating it with a statement. But what about the one, just to give you another example, that they uh, say, uh, you know, again, in, or in their heart, they have this belief in Tawheed, although, and this is why it's more, it's more accurate what Ben Baz said, فِي in their claim, they're claiming that they believe, they say, okay, many people, they say they believe in one God. Christians say that, Jews say that. Many people, even Hindus, some of them, Claim something similar to that, okay? But what if the other point Ben Ba'as said, وَلَكِنْ أَشْرَكْ We said the قَوْلْ أُبِفَعْلْ Or in an action, in an action that's proven in Islam, that the, uh, all the imams, so if you uh, love Imam Abu Hanifa, and if you love Imam Shafi'i, and if you love Imam Malik, and if you love Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, you'll see that they... Ha agreed on and they made take fear of those people who negated Tawheed because that's consistent with the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf Asadi Ridwan Allah yani. that's consistent with their belief and what comes from the Quran and the Sunnah so for example the one who negates that Tawheed even though they said in their, their they claim on their tongue and in their heart there's some deception there's some distortion but they uh, they sacrifice animals to other in the name of Jesus or in the name of some Hindu shrine or the name of some snake or whatever the case may be or the name of Buddha. Okay, but even though they claim they say the Shahada and they uh, have all those the, the, and they claim uh, Tawheed, but now they've negated it. Whoever sacrificed other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has committed shirk. So you understand? I hope that's clear. That was from Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It wasn't from Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. And it wasn't from uh, our contemporaries, Imam Fuzan, Bin Baz, Bin Uthaymeen, Imam Muqbil, whoever. It wasn't from them. It wasn't from Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. It was from Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Abu Qasim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam That's who it was from So that's why we have to be careful In how we criticize And the Uth Uthmani thing I'm not even going to get into Because it's a big mas'ala We've talked about it a little bit You can read about it And you can believe whatever you want but what's more important is this lie about Tawheed or this distortion about Tawheed that you made or the claim uh, about Muhammad and Wahhab that you made. I hope you at least have an open mind and you look into it more regardless of whether you change. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and you, forgive us and you. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.